Welcome to Box Carbs, War Machine and Horde supplementary podcast for War Room PL YouTube channel. Welcome to episode 25 of Box Cars. Uh, I am Marcin and I'm playing Minions. And I'm Thomas and I play Circle Orboros. Yeah. Rafa is not uh, joining us today. Unfortunately, he has some business to take care of. So it will be just two of us. Uh, so you can contact us uh, through our website, uh, warroom.pl. Uh, we have a blog there where uh, there are few authors uh, writing so you can read uh, around there and Tomasz is also writing there so some interesting yeah. stuff circle and not only uh, so uh, that's one thing and uh, one of these days I will uh, make it uh, automatic so I don't have to t- tell you all about it <laughs> so I, I tried to do semi-regular uh, streams of my games uh, right now it's more or less every two weeks usually on Thursday's evening but uh, not this week because this week we are going to or maybe you will, I will manage to one this week but we are going to uh, Con, Conquest in uh, Oslo me and Rafa so we will uh, record some games there definitely if internet will be good enough on the on in the hotel we'll also do streaming uh, of uh, of one of the tables so you can you can expect expect some streams uh, going uh, live uh, from there uh, awesome. I, yeah i have uh, pretty tempered <laughs> expectations <laughs> Because I think the minions are very good, but uh, I'm not very good with minions still. So <laughs> this will be a big uh, exercise for me. That's a that's a first uh, bigger con or tournament where I'm taking only minions. I because of the luggage room on the plane, I am only taking minions. So yeah, no. people people still don't know much about them. Yeah. There are not many players, so me neither. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm well, you have some advantage there. Yeah, Good luck. Yeah, I, I'm taking a pair, uh, Barney and uh, Jaga Jaga, and I have like total which Barney? Yeah, Barney one. I don't yeah. have Barney two yet, uh, still. So, uh, so Barney one, uh, I have seven games with, and uh, with Jaga Jaga, I have eight games. So combined games, fifteen. I I feel like I was never so unprepared for a tournament ever. Usually, I manage. Yeah, usually without uh, 20 games per caster, I wasn't taking a caster to a tournament if I didn't play with him at least 20 times. But, but uh, yeah, last months were a bit busy with holidays and family time, etc., etc. And I was jumping uh, all the time from one caster to the other in minions to, to try them out. Uh, so I finally settled for a pair. Yeah, but, that's good. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's uh, for news and uh, also a, a shameless plug from me to uh, people play on Vassal. If, uh, if you don't have a, a good local community where you can find uh, games with models, go to uh, search on Google Vassal War Machine and you can play on free, for free online. That's a, a great great place to learn uh, to play and also there's a tutorial for Vassal, a line of sight did it? Exactly they did uh, a, a voice one of the podcasts they committed completely to Vassal so so you can you can also listen to that uh, this will help you largely uh, in, in start, start out yeah. alright so today's episode we'll be talking about uh, year 2017 summary, also our uh, plans for 2018 a bit, and at the end we'll talk a bit about the the, the new ATC uh, tournament coming in in the states. So we we'll maybe discuss a couple of lists lists <coughs> uh, if if time allows, but I think we sh- it should be okay. 
So, how was your year, year in War Machine? I started playing this year, so <laughs> I would say busy. I've played many games. Uh, I don't count them. I'm sure it was more than a hundred. Played two Masters events. The first was Polish Nationals, and the second was Steam Horn Wars. And uh, local tournaments, there were so many. I uh, I lost count. Uh, okay. Not sure. How often do you have local tournaments of War Machine? Every two weeks or every month? We have once a month a uh, local tournament and usually if there's someone going to tournament in the city nearby, I'm usually jumping in and, and going. So I would say on average I play two tournaments a month local and we have also a small tournament on at zero points every month as well it's it's just for fun but it's still a practice it is yeah nice i mean i i think i had a plan in 2017 to play a tournament a month and i almost made it depending on how you count cons because i had two local tournaments five master and WTC, so that's eight. And I went to two cons, to Ironwood and Clockcon. And on each of those, I played two tournaments plus invitational rounds. So three tournaments on each, so to say. Right, so it's 10 tournaments and WTC counts as, I would say, five. <laughs> so you uh, managed. Yeah. I mean, if you count only con as one tournament, then I'm under my plan. And if you count uh, con cons as uh, tournaments played on them, uh, then I'm over it. So I'm pretty happy. I, mean, I couldn't squeeze any anything more than I did. So pretty well. But the uh, funny thing that my successes on local scene uh, were <laughs> zero to to null. <laughs> I mean, I had. <laughs> I always, if I go to a local tournament, I, I take some junky lists that I never played before. So junky casters, so with usually zero experience. And I never get a, to, a, to a good spot there. <laughs> but maybe that's good on my uh, local community. That I don't take a list that I played 50 times each. Uh, then probably they wouldn't be very happy with me. <laughs> they can have fun and... You know, and kick my they, they would cry every time they, they need to play with you. Yeah, exactly. So, with Masters, five from five Masters, I managed to win one uh, in Poznań as well. Uh, Steam Horse War, Steam Horse... Uh, Wars. Steam Horn Wars. Yeah, Steam Horn Wars, yeah. And I was seventh on Polish Masters, which is pretty, pretty good. And uh, my my great success that I count as more than winning Masters, I won a game versus two tiles as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I was sixth on Berlin Masters. So those uh, so three three out of five I had pretty. Uh, I mean I won, won one and two more I had a decent placement. So so that was a good good thing this year. And also from on both cons, I managed to qualify invitational, in, and on both uh, cons, I, I lost on round one. So that's it, sad. Uh, that's sad. But uh, yeah, what was the reason on, on Iron Mode? I was not prepared for the meta, and on Clock Con, I was playing first time versus New Madrak one and made too many mistakes because of the I didn't know the matchup very well. So <clears throat> there is yeah, I saw, I saw the game. Yeah. It was pretty good, but yeah. You know, I mean, when you start playing Holiday Free and you play first time into Madrak One, you are yeah. probably going to lose. Yeah, I mean, I had uh, I had like 50, 50 games of Haley Three total by that time, but I had I haven't played her before Clockcon for half a year or more because she was in my in my pair for WTC, so. When I started preparing for WTC, I stopped playing Haley 3, so there is a, a huge gap of time. I yeah, and she, she needs uh, yeah, reps. Yeah, exactly. So so that game I lost on clock, but if, even if I didn't lose, lose that game on clock, I would lose it on, on scenario probably and attrition because I made too many mistakes at the beginning phases of the game. And yeah, it happens. Exactly. So I'm, I'm usually not... Uh, 
not kicking myself for for mistakes. I just try to you know find uh, the reason I lost and and uh, really yeah I'm, I cry at night. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> I have a plan to talk uh, on one of our uh, future podcasts about the personalities and how everybody is uh, thinking, approaching the game, and how the personalities influence your your game and taking in the data from the games, etc., etc. So I actually started preparing that because this will be a bit demanding on us. So I will send you the all show notes and the articles to read before we start. All right, that's a that's great topic. I yeah, mean, that's really a, interesting. It is, it is. This is a very mm-hmm. interesting topic. And what I wanted to hint at, I usually, if I lose, whenever I lose, I just... I cannot stop analyzing the game unle- until I find the mistakes I made that were key to the to losing. If it was important game for me, for example, like in the invitationals or finals of of, uh, of a tournament, uh, sometimes you get diced and then you cannot do anything. And or maybe you could you could you know take in that you, your opponent will have high rolls and uh, <clears throat> have a backup for that as well. But this is. Usually I don't do that. I usually operate in averages uh, that will, you know, sometimes the rolls are high, sometimes are low, low. So, but in 100 rolls per game, it should be you know, like pretty up, even. Pretty even. So I operate in my mind in averages, and uh, if I'm losing, that's usually to to some tactical errors that I did. And yeah, and, it would be it will be weird to count on. You know, two dice to roll ten or more. Uh, yeah, like exactly. no one, do, no. Yeah, no do, one they, does do it. Uh, yeah. yeah, some people. And if they do, they probably don't win games. Yeah, that's a that's a thing that we'll talk about that uh, as well because some personalities that are uh, uh, like uh, like adventures, etc. <laughs> some people like risks and adventures, and they think in their minds like this has to work because that's a great idea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know I, I have a very analytical mind, so uh, my approach to the game is very pragmatic. And I know the, I need reps, I need to know if I lose why I lost, because then I can get better and next time don't do the same mistake. But of course, if uh, I'm at the spot that I'm not really comfortable at uh, with minions, because I'm starting to know minions a bit, but I don't know what to expect expect from the matchups. Because with Signal I had like 350 games, so I more or less knew if I take, uh, for example, Hail 2 against something, yeah. then it will run like this. I had a feeling how the matchup will run, uh, because I knew also uh, the matchup itself, because I played it like, I don't know, one two times before and with minions uh, like if I have combined uh, games of 15 with my uh, two casters uh, all right there's a a little, very little chance that I will have that I will start a matchup that, that I already know a number of 15 reminds me of your Halle free games it was the same number so before con you should yeah. you should play at least one more yeah. <laughs> for good luck yeah. and I, I'm curious uh, how do you feel about uh, hordes uh, in, in compared to War Machine? I mean, I was always thinking that War Machine has uh, easier late game because uh, you don't have to do all those frenzy checks and things that takes time. You know, you can just put all the focus you need on a, your caster and power up, and that's it. No, yes. how do you feel about it? Uh... Yeah, the com- comparison is is very good. It's uh, on the other hand, uh, I that's that's true what you said. But the, on the other hand, the uh, uh, alphas that uh, that hordes do tend to be much stronger uh, because you have on your war be small initials than than the war machine has, and also really yeah, like yes, usually, usually it's usually two war beast has a three. At least in minions, some of them have one, but uh, but the, the average like rustler or or I don't know, uh, uh, average uh, pig, uh, they have three initials heavies. 
Oh, all right, that's and, cool. And not they, not, they not are, in a circle. Yeah, they are a bit weaker compared to War Machine. War Machine is power 18 usually, around. 19 is, is a light heavy, but it's around 18. But uh, War Machine doesn't have so, so easy buffs. So if I take a Rustler, his, uh, his main attack is 17 and hands are 14, for example, but you get... You have Rage. You have Rage, uh, right like that, so it's actually a main attack of 20 and uh, two 17s. So I've got th three initials and then four Fury. That, me that means that a Warbeast can make uh, seven, e seven attacks and the uh, yeah. same mm, level of Heavy in War Machine will only do like one main initial that will be a stronger one like 19 probably and the second one is a hand that usually is 14 and you cannot buff it easily uh, there are very few casters that, that have buffs for them so and then he will pay then then he'll do one initial one heavy initial one supporting initial and then he can buy three attacks yeah. so it's compared like seven attacks to five that's a that's a huge difference so of course you will run your beast hot and then you'll probably friends the next round. But if you do it properly, that might be that there is no opponents to <laughs> to kill your Warbies, right? Right? I think that uh, how it should be. And uh, the hordes are vastly different between the factions. War Machine Warjacks are much more similar to each other. Yeah. Like I, I... if you compare uh, your wolves. Uh, to, for example, Gators or to uh, uh, Legion Beasts. They yeah, they, are, them they are, are very different. They are hugely different, right? Your Wolves have uh, some uh, abilities. They are high defense, uh, fast and, and me uh, medium strong. The Gators are stronger, slower, and, uh, uh, and uh, Legion Beasts are much weaker than others, but are flying and, and, and uh, are the fastest of them. So the War Machine doesn't have that much uh, difference. Of course, they, they they need to differ a bit, but but the you know speed and, and speed and slowness of the Warjacks is between f uh, four and five, and and Warbees are between four and seven. Uh, yeah. So that's a uh, huge f huge differences uh, between between hordes, but power level. I think there is a lot of people that are down on hordes, but I wouldn't go go that far. I think the hordes are are okay. Maybe Legion. Yeah, judging the by CAD, but judging by ATC, uh, I would say it's pretty even yeah. on on hordes versus uh, War Machine. The most is uh, Signar. There's Circle Orboros and Crix uh, second. And Grimkin, Scorn, Retribution. So you have War Machine, Hordes, War Machine, Hordes, Hordes, War Machine, War Machine, War Machine, War Machine, mm. Hordes, 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 War Machine. Yeah. So if you add it up, I think it would be pretty even. Maybe just a little bit for War Machine, but not by much. So. And I think people were maybe were down, but CID and uh, everything that changed over the year uh, has so, yeah. that they, the game game is getting to the better spot all the time and uh, and CAD is making mm, bad stuff uh, better so and good stuff worse and uh, yeah not I don't think they, they made much uh, there was a few Una two, adjustments uh, yeah, but, two. It, but it mm. wasn't a CAD it was a dynamic update so they just they didn't ask for anybody they just <laughs> Yeah. Nerve, nerve hammer, nerve butt, and bam, and it's changed. And maybe that's the better because if they had to listen to whining for like three weeks of CID, then uh, another month of people whining after the CID. Yeah, they then, had to yeah. about Danny one. Yeah, okay, that's the only, that's the actually only one I I can remember they they nerfed in CID. Yeah. All the other nerfs they they just did themselves. But uh, I'm over that. I he, think he Una, Una now needed. I'm not playing Signor, so I, I think it's okay. Yeah, Una is still very powerful. Yeah, but she needed as soon as possible to change her because she was too strong. 
not the case with Halle 2, yeah, but was... it was Halle 2 versus Halle 2 and later Halle 2 versus Danny or something like this. So they had to uh, really fast update. There was no time for, for CAD because it was stupid, you know? Yeah, I mean, Halle 2 was a clutch for, for Signal uh, for a long time. Now, I, if I was playing Signal, I would try her in Sons of the Tempest, but... Uh, I don't know if it would be any good, but uh, that's my feeling that it would be probably nice. But now Cry is very good. Uh, yeah, I think she she will go back. Like it was the thing with Una. After Nerf, no one played her anymore, and people said she's she's weak. Garbage, yeah. And now, yeah, they play me included back again. Yeah, I mean Haley Haley too is is a great assassination caster, and any changes that were done to her did not change that she's still a great assassination caster, and I think she can uh, she can play in Sons of the Tempest because that's a, a team that might uh, make the assassinations easier. So, yeah. all right, so let's move on to the next uh, point. Uh, games played. You didn't count your games, but. I'm counting my games since I started playing War Machine. So uh, right. in 2017 I played 230 games and my target was 150 games. So I I'm So over, you failed. No, yeah, I failed. I'm over my target like over 80 games. Yeah. But uh, I increased my win rate to 70% because the first year I was playing I had like 61% win rate now I have uh, around 70 That's great, congrats. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know about if it's great, but the, the, the top end players uh, that I know of, like Jarle and Pat, they have uh, their win rates around 90 to 95%. Oh. I mean, I don't like... Uh, I don't like being so tense and uh, concentrated in every game, in every single game I play. So usually when I'm playing outside of the tournaments, I I tend to make much more mistakes. So that's why their win rate is where it is. It's good thing that it goes up, not down. Yeah, exactly. like it means you're you're a better better player, and it's Evolving, all that matters. Right? Yeah, exactly. So what you? I don't count my games, yeah. but. We have this tourney keeper side yeah. uh, with every tournament that happens in Poland. And I just looked at uh, statistics and I played 30 tournament games this year. It's uh, 30 with 77% win ratio. Nice. It's 23 nice. games out of 30 win and 7 lost. So I, I, I'm pretty happy with this win ratio. It's going up and up, and it's over 70%, so hooray. Yeah, that's very nice. It's very nice. And then in the first, first year of playing, so that's that's impressive. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Rafa, so we had, I mean, I made my plans for 2018, and uh, Rafa uh, has shared his. Uh, yeah, so what are they? Yeah, they are very, very compact. Uh, I mean, Rafaels are very compact. <laughs> God, I cannot find them. I know his one plan is uh, buy the Crucible Guard and paint it f uh, fully. Yeah, he wants to buy the whole faction and uh, do a FPA. Yeah, so. exactly. So he wants to do it in 2018. I'm wondering how fast they will be available. Well, that should be po possible. The second, uh, second half. half. Yeah, second half of his plans is uh, to win a con. So that's a. Uh, he almost made it uh, in 2017. He went to finals in uh, in Clockcon, but then he. <laughs> Uh, he forgot that there is a divide and conquer, and uh, he had to play his off list uh, that was suffering <laughs> right, in so the it, final. Yeah. It's Raffles' thing. Yeah, he likes. He does that. It. Yeah, he likes to. Yeah, but on the other hand, getting uh, it is not a sure thing. He would win versus because it was Pat Dunford that was facing him. So even with his main list, it would be a, a difficult. Uh, difficult to fight yeah and i think if if he chose his second list earlier he could not get, not get into there. finals yeah, exactly so. so he got into finals now he wants to win a con that's uh, 
that's a good plan. Yeah, uh, if he was second, so where can you go from there, yeah, right? Exactly. I'm not so greedy. <laughs> so my my plan this year is like play 150 games and the stretch goal would be around 200 games probably so similar to this year and then then play on minimum eight tournaments and uh, qualify to to invitational on one uh, on one of the cons i go to and then get this time to round two because <laughs> i already <laughs> twice qualified to Invitational and dropped in, in round one. So now getting to round two would be a, a nice stretch goal. And uh, anything anything more than that would be a, a cherry on the top. <sighs> so then one another goal I have is to be in top three on one of the Masters tournament I attend. And of course, the stretch goal would be to, to win one of the Masters. That yeah. would be a, a very good, at least one in a year is good for morale and and my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then play on WTC, preferably in, in one of the Polish teams, uh, uh, worst, worst case in singles and uh, maybe uh, as a mercenary in for one of the other countries that, that cannot take full team. All right. And uh, a stretch goal would be to get get a, a five to one uh, reach at least. ratio at least yeah because i had four to two this year and i was very close in in both games that i lost so i think getting to to five one is possible for me yeah so everything is like one step further except yeah, exactly. for minimum games of yeah it's, yeah I, i'm real, real realistical because 230 games is for a bit more than four games a week and I, I definitely cannot exceed that it's uh, it's just yeah you want to keep your wife yeah right? I want to have my <laughs> wife my family also and I I know I don't know if you know I I train triathlon so it's like eight to, to 12 hours a week of uh, workout and yeah. then each game takes two hours so <laughs> At least, so then, uh, if you if you sum all this up, uh, that's a lot of uh, hobby time that I that I spend plus painting and etc. Yeah, I know how you feel. I yeah. uh, I, I do powerlifting. I, I play the guitar. I, I yeah. paint. I, I play war machine. So, yeah. so you know, you have to make sacrifices. You yeah, need exactly. to have make time, and I you mean, need I, to keep your family. Exactly. So I'm. I, and feed it. I'm a great planner. I'm. I really think that my biggest plus is that I can plan everything very well and uh, so also I can plan my time very efficiently so so everything is <laughs> planned to the minute except when my kids don't cooperate like today when I was putting my son to sleep <laughs> all right so sometimes the the best plans don't work out so, so I'm I, jealous yeah. I, I'm the worst meant to organize my time <laughs> i'm very interested what uh, what color of uh, of hour you are i will send you a link to so you can do the test or maybe i can, you can tell you it. already it's yeah. green it's green okay it's green. perfect i thought so because that's like uh, green guitars i have green orboros so <laughs> every my life is green <laughs> yeah so um that's interesting <clears throat> but you might be surprised <laughs> we'll see yeah we'll see so, so tell me about your plans for about 2018. My plans for 2018. I want to do some video battle reports for for our channel because I, I've started already. I, I recorded a game yesterday and I spent my whole day today trying to put the video together. I've recorded some music, background music for it, and you know, like a lot of work. <laughs> All right, but you, you made uh, already like a thousand of videos. Uh, yeah, I have my I own. Made a lot, but you know, the, I'm, I'm jealous that you can do your own music. I had to, you know, search for online for something that will be yeah, more or less fitting. I, I, I don't know. Wait for the music, <laughs> because you know, the fact that I can make music, it doesn't make the music good. Okay, <laughs> so right. we'll see. Fair, fair point. 
I, I actually want to make a Gator battle report uh, because I have a perfect music for that. I found it online, but yeah, I've heard it today. Uh, I was okay. searching through your files. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's very good, and uh, I, I saw uh, a channel that uh, uh, a guy there plays Minion and also have this country music. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's where, where I have it from. I just love it. I just I think it's so fitting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like it's crazy good. It's uh, I, I enjoyed it. Maneuver, and it's Gaston that is playing the minions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So going back to my plans, yeah. so I, I want to do those battle reports, not like like you do. I want to do them um, a bit differently, like speed them up and uh, make them more digestible, but by people that don't have the time to to watch it in in yeah, uh, mine were like half speed. A, my, my were like half an hour uh, if i when i did a battle report uh, the fast one yeah i i'm speed them up uh, uh, wait a minute was it three times or four i think three times uh, oh. because the anything faster for me at least was hard to follow up uh, what i'm doing actually uh, or tell people what i'm doing on the video up three times and it took like half an hour but 20 couple of minutes to half an hour battle report yeah i was trying to find a sweet spot today the first battle report will be at uh, twice the speed and it didn't took that long it's like 40 hours with uh, intro and outro so i think it's 40 minutes you mean? 40 minutes yeah <laughs> sorry yeah uh, uh 40 minutes so i think it's okay and if I have a longer game like that goes down to clock, I will probably f try to find like three or four times. We'll see. It's you know I'm experimenting, but my goal is to make at least one a month a uh, video battle report, and I want to put uh, English uh, commentary over it. That's that's great because if you make one a month and I will make one a month, then we have uh, more or less regular every two weeks uh, a video battle report plus. Uh, our streams that are in a, a normal time and plus then of course our tournament uh, once a month there will be a video probably more or less uh, videos yeah, from a lot month. of content uh, so it's coming people it's coming we are actually we are uh, a channel that is very short shortly on the so to say on the market so we, uh, we are just above a year uh, out there so so yeah, it will be big one English. day. Yeah. There is obviously a, a, a barrier for us of the language, but I think it's getting better and better. And the more we, we speak, the more we write, it's going to be a lot better. The quality is going up every every time we try something, yeah. to do something. And the, our page looks sweet, I think. Yeah, it was a lot of work. We had to find out all the all the glitches, etc. Especially yeah, and that we didn't we didn't use the blog so much at the beginning. We were concentrating on the on the YouTube more. Then we started using it. More people started writing and, and yeah. So people, if you listen to us and you saw our our page, but it wasn't really that good, give it another chance. Yeah. You might be surprised. Exactly, it's much better right now. So going back to my yeah, plans, your plans. <laughs> I, I want to try Devourer's Host. I, I didn't spend much time this year on it. Like I know people like Tarns and they are quite popular. At least if you can say something in Circle is popular. If someone plays Circle, they probably play Devourer's Host with Tarns and Death Wolves. They are really good, but I just don't like how they look. I don't like the models that much and... I know they are going to get a CID uh, somewhere in three, four months, I think. So it will be a good chance to, to finally spend some time with them and, and master them. So that's that. And, and the win ratio. I started to write down my games just to know how many I play since uh, the 1st of January. I've played in the New Year's Eve. I, I've played my first game in 2018. So I... I, I decided to write them down what I played against what caster and if I win or lose and if I win how did I win and how, or how did I lose uh, 
but I don't have like particular goal for my win ratio. I just want to win as much as I can, you know, and I don't want to be let down if I don't. Uh, I mean, uh, me neither. I, I don't uh, assume any win ratio. This is uh, too hard to control and uh, and I don't want to put uh, pressure on myself like uh, under, uh, you know, psychologically without you know me even thinking about it, I'll be choosing weaker opponents so I can have a win ratio better. Yeah. I don't want that. I just I just want to play games and the better the player I'm up against and the better for me because if I lose I learn something so so I don't yeah. want to and uh, I ne- never I never want I always count my uh, win ratio at the end of the year but I never want to assume any that I will reach win ratio this and this because that's that's something I don't want to yeah, put my mind on too much. Yeah, I, I have some experience uh, I'm doing, as I said, the powerlifting. It's obviously amateur, uh, nothing crazy, but I don't compete or anything. But it taught me that your main goal should be to be better. You know, just mm-hmm. to to move forward, to get better every day, every every month, every year. Not to put uh, yourself into into a spot that you you can fail to achieve your goal if it's just too high. Like let's say you you've did a deadlift of 200 kilograms. Uh, your next goal should be to to be above that, not to deadlift 300 kilograms. Because you know it's life and it can put you in in some different situations and difficult situations. Exactly, there are many. That, there is also things like when I go to, for example, to a tournament. I never I never put myself under a pressure that I want to win the tournament, because there is something like uh, there is a game that I have to play. The next game I have to play. This is everything I need to worry about. No, nothing else. Nothing that will be in two or three games or the whole tournament. Really? Just, just the game. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the game that I'm in right now. And uh, as you say, there are so many things that influence our behavior on the day. Uh, there's something like um, there there are some days that you are, your mind will be in a better state, more rested or more relaxed and and your thought processes will be better, so so also it will be better on our machine. It's the same, like in sport. In, yeah. in in some days, your body is just more efficient, so you can run better, swim better, and, and I know be on, better on the bike. And on some days it will be worse. And you, it's it's something that you cannot influence. You can only do your best. Yeah. So yeah, every That's time. It. Every time you should always assume I want to do my best and not give up. Just my game can be shit, but at least I can uh, try to get my activations right. I can yeah, try and to, uh, in the end of the yeah. day, you know, you you did your best. Exactly. Yeah. Like at the moment you, you've tried. So, yes. yeah. so I think it's healthy. I, I have this saying that you're either first or last. <laughs> I mean, no spot in between on a tournament is really satisfying for me. But but uh, you know, I, I never go to a tournament and, and put the pressure. I I need to be first. Yeah. I need to give my best. Like I I feel like I have a toothache, a, a, a belly ache, or or whatever. Like like the weather is oh, bad, today, or, or yeah, I, I, I haven't slept well. <laughs> Yeah, so taking uh, circumstances as they are, uh, I still try to just mm, do my best and stay focused, not not get let down by those things. Because because you know you, we need to be strong. Like if you want to win War Machine games, uh, it it won't be easy. Because you know this game is really tiring and and tournaments are long and there's a lot of hum around, a lot of people speaking. You probably need to sacrifice your healthy diet for something that's just easy to grab and and stuff like that, so. Mm. Yes, uh, Tomasz, do, uh, do you plan to apply for WTC team this year from Poland? Uh, I was thinking about it. 
with the time that the last WTC took place, I was uh, sick. Uh, I spent the time in my bed trying to get better, and I watched every game. Like I was following everything that happens there. So I think it was a great experience that gave me the motivation that I want to uh, get there one day. But now, when after I I won the Masters and I can think realistic that I can make it there, I, I started to think if I really want to to go there because you know that I would need to to sacrifice myself for the tournament. Like no excuses. I I know maybe <laughs> I can't say I know myself, but in this regard, I'm sure that. Uh, if I decide to go there and I fill my application form, I will spend so much time on War Machine. I will sacrifice the things that are important for me in my life. So I'm really hesitant. It's a difficult, about, difficult choice. Yeah, difficult choice. And I want to take my time and uh, apply like before the deadline. Just not to to put uh, you know someone in a place that I I send my application and after that I, I will try to resignate. I don't want that. I I need to be sure. So can't give you <laughs> a, a straight answer. I think there is like 60%. I I will try to make it there, but you know. I would need to decide to go there, and someone would need to decide they want me there. <laughs> so yeah. I think not... I think you should apply. If if uh, for anything else is just to make others work hard on their spot on WTC, I think a lot of people should apply. And I wouldn't be even mad if I, for example, didn't make it because somebody better than me made made it because that means that our team is better. And I will definitely go to WTC whenever I'm part of one of Polish teams or, or not, or a mercenary, for sure I will play in singles then, uh, if not on the on the main tournament. Because it's right. uh, such a great event, so many people come there and, and so many great people you can meet and, and play great games, so. Yeah, I would, uh, love to, War, I would love to. War Machine at its finest, I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. Like the best players out around the world go there, so. So it needs to be. And did you feel uh, pressure on yourself uh, playing the games that your, you know, your team depends on you? Yeah. And truly, I mean, we had previous experience with Rafa because we went to uh, ETC. It's uh, for Flames European, War, yeah, European yeah. Team Championship for Flames War. It's it's the same like. WTC, but for for Flames of War and War, Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Battle, uh, we went there four years in a row. Uh, oh, out, yeah, so. yeah. Out of those four, we won three times and and placed second once. And so we are used to feeling that pressure. But of course, every time you start a game in a team tournament of such a high caliber you definitely feel the much more pressure than on, at least I uh, feel much more pressure than on the regular game or even a tournament game. Yeah. yeah that's the, so, uh, because of the, exactly like you say, it's a teammates that are depending on your win. Uh, not only only you that they will either win or lose. It's your, it's the whole team that is. It becomes a team sport. Yeah. So it's a different, uh, different thing. Yeah. And if and you then, if you were part of this Flames of War uh, WTC uh, team, so WTC of War Machine was probably a piece of cake, or or uh, at least I mean, easier I, I, than I, for people that you know yeah. uh, been there the first time. We had, or, we or had a bit, we had a bit of uh, lesser pressure probably because the last year how the. Uh, how the selection process went for for the teams it was team one two and three and we were yeah. part of team three so the expectations from the team three are not as high as from say team for one, team one the yeah. team one that had uh, most experience most years played and and went to WTC a lot of times and team three was mostly newer players that were given a chance to 
to participate. This this year the selection process is regional, so I don't know how it's going to work out. It's, I think it's uh, it's good on the committee to to try and change things. Maybe it will be for the better. Uh, I hope so. And uh, yeah. application process is is interesting because you have to report every month your games to the committee and this oh, yeah, is we do it over. anyway right yeah. yeah yeah i mean i i i note my games anyway so so that's not a problem for us but for example if there are 10 players uh, applying and they all know uh, only five of them can make it uh, yeah. this means each of them will try to get as many games as as they can and uh, the community in general will be better off because there will be more games of war machine played around so yeah. so That's with true. this true. yeah with this move there will be a competition on let's say in total like 30 players will try to get as many games as possible uh, so in the end we'll have uh, much more war machine going around yeah i know but I would need to keep up with my successes. I, you know, like I started our uh, uh, season with this, I won our first Masters and I took part in two local tournaments uh, by then. I won both. So like by far I won everything this season I've started and I'm the fir first one in, in the uh, Polish league. Uh, the first player. <laughs> yeah, so you know, like I, I, some people can say that I, I'm, I'm just lucky, and I probably am. But to make it to WTC, I would, I would need to keep up with with those numbers. I would need to be at least in, in top three, so so people know that I'm I'm on the level, the highest level, and it wasn't just uh, a luck of or or a glitch in in the in the game that uh, just uh, you know the time that your faction is really strong like pr probably it's not the case because yeah. circle arboras by far was uh, you know considered the third worst i know the trolls were worse and and the minions, minions. Yeah. but but you know we'll see a lot it's of definitely questions. not i mean the luck is huge part of this game for sure but you cannot win uh, masters and two local tournaments in a row uh, just with sure luck. That's not just not possible. You've definitely had some luck. That's always uh, always the case. If you if you win, then I wouldn't yeah. say it's not possible without luck. But it's uh, the luck. Some some luck helps uh, to you know you make mistake and then by a bit bit of luck uh, your opponent does not use it or. or uh, has some uh, bad dice and, and cannot use it and then you s still win but you cannot uh, base your <laughs> like 10 games uh, on three tournaments on, on winning on luck that's that's just not it's not working this way yeah it's more than 10 <laughs> yeah, it more. is six games and masters four because there they were a uh, local tournaments uh, that four, had four, more okay. people yeah. than than 14 so four round events yeah, so it's 13 so 14 14 games yeah yeah good i would say almost impossible to to you know <laughs> keep yeah. myself in but the same take, spot just, every time yeah take it easy you don't have to win every single event just you know win a masters uh, every couple of months so people will remember <laughs> who's the boss yeah. easy peasy <laughs> yeah exactly all right so let's go to the last point of today's uh, discussion. yeah i have one more i want to paint my army like okay. everything every every piece i i have my I have everything for Circle Boros almost maxed out in field allowance and I think I have around 50% painted so not a lot but still a lot <laughs> right a lot, a lot of work so before that's a good uh, good thing because I love playing versus fully painted armies because I always when I go to tournaments I uh, to bigger ones on masters uh, I always have fully painted arms. Yeah, and it's better for our uh, video battle reports, I think. Exactly. People like to watch painted 
stuff, patent exactly. things, and it's easier to recognize things on the table when, when they are painted uh, and have some contrast. And I'm not, not superstitious generally, but uh, two things I believe. Red, red cars go faster and painted models play better. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, I started to saying that we'll now discuss each of our one if each of us will pick a, a one of the lists from ATC and we'll right. try to, to have some short discussion about those lists so just to to have some diversity in our podcast not us talking uh, for an, an hour about ourselves our, our right who gives a fuck yeah exactly <laughs> no one cares about yeah. our lives and plans and whatever so yeah. let's talk about ATC lists yeah so what's your favorite list there I mean I, I've went through minions and signal because that's things that I know uh, something about but I, I picked an interesting uh, signal uh, list it's a cane 2 in grave diggers All right. it's interesting explain it it's uh, team Gresham Gravy Train and it's Ben Fitch. I think I, I wrote I read it right. Not sure, but uh, it's a it's a what's interesting is Kane 2 because Kane 2 disappeared generally after he was nerfed, so nobody was is playing or very few Kane 2 players are around and uh, in the list itself is also not very standard like this is game two with Ace, Triumph and Reinhold. It's in Grave Digger's team, so Reinhold is the one allowed mercenary. Yeah. And then he's got uh, Maxwell Finn, uh, Trench Master Gunner, Trench Warcaster Lieutenant, you don't see very often as well. The Lieutenant has two chargers under him. And there is Lady Ayana and Master Holt with, with Murdoch. Uh, Rangers, Trencher Cannon Crew, and the uh, maxed out uh, Trencher Infantry with UA. So the question is like, can what's you the, what's the game plan? Can like? you come to me? <laughs> like, yeah, it's okay. a strong gun line. Uh, all right, so it's a it's a strong gun line that that has uh, very long ranges because of age, uh, Ace and Triumph. And uh, Reinhold gives Kane additional shots. Kane himself. With his yeah, feet, can take down a heavy, stealth, right? And he can see stealth. Ace can see stealth. Triumph can see stealth. Reinhold can ignore stealth. Uh, so there is a, a, a lot of very accurate shooting thanks to Rangers, and there is a damage multiplier in uh, form of Lady Ayana and Muscle Hold. Yeah, and so, the magic weapons, right? And so magic so weapons as well. And the Ace and Triumph have uh, their magic weapons. Kane has also they, so it's it's a very flexible list. And Kane can give Trenchers no knockdown spell, so they will be they will not be repositioning like in case of Haley Tree uh, clouds, but they will be not be able to be knocked down, and they will have high defense. So. And they tough. Will, and tough, yeah. So they will be difficult to remove. If they tough, they stay there, and uh, the the cloud wall stays. So I'm, I will probably follow up on that list. I'm pretty interested how it would perform because the second list of this player is is Nemo three and all around there. Oh, yeah. So I what I'm a bit suspecting, but. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm a bit, bit su suspecting that Kane 2 is is a, a counter to Haley 3, which is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of Haley 3, and uh, Kane might be an answer for that. Yeah, it yeah. can be. Yeah. And he can see through Haley's uh, cloud, he can uh, very accurately shoot thanks to Rangers. Rangers just run in, and Kane can pick uh, apart uh, trenches of Haley tree uh, removing them and uh, and so Haley's cloud wall will disappear very fast and without the cloud wall Haley will have difficult time and there are a lot of magic weapons like you mentioned to to kill the echoes so that might be uh, 
that might yeah, be it a, might be a thing. A thing too. We, yeah. on those Steam tournaments, you you can you can uh, put a matchup where, where where you want it to be. So, so I'm yeah. a bit uh, interested if Kane 2 can hold uh, against Nemo 3. Uh, because if it's a signal drop, he should be able to, you know. Nothing can. Right? Yeah. yeah, something. Thing. I mean, I lost with Nemo a lot of times. Usually Nemo died, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. But Nemo can be uh, beaten, so. Haley Tree can beat Nemo as well, so. It's not an easy matchup, but uh, with some experience in placement, you can you can beat Nemo Tree with Haley Tree as well. All right, that's all I had to say about that list. What's, what what did you pick? So I picked two lists. Uh, one will be short because I pick lists of Beast Handlers and Blake Hoppers is playing Baldur 2 and Una 2. And I picked those lists because those are my lists <laughs> from, from, yeah, from previous event. Not, uh, one list is from uh, Masters, but after the Masters I took... Uh, to a local tournament, Baldur uh, to double World Draft, and my Una from Masters, and I won that. I, I put uh, my trophy, as usual, on the Circle Orboros page, so Blake probably saw it and uh, took my list, and it's an honor, so good luck, Blake. And the second uh, list, so, so it's a list of Una 2 with six Scarsfeld's Griffins and Pure Blood for Magic Weapons and, and the Right Bane and Dahlia and Scarab. And there are, there is, there's some support, like what can you expect from the Call of the Wild? You can take only Shifting Stones, uh, Black Lads and Druid Wielder. And there are some other choices that are not really not really uh, relevant, uh, so there's a, a bit of support. I think it's a cool list, and I expect to see it do well on uh, on this tournament. Uh, I'm sure it can handle many many things in in the meta. And there's uh, one more thing I want to talk about in ATC: that Circle Orboros is on the rise, like. Have you seen the statistics? Yeah, they, they are largely changed since uh, last I saw uh, level of circle. Yeah, it was like yeah. Uh, one percent, like to none, and now it's uh, sixteen people playing circle, which is the second most popular faction there, and uh, yeah, uh, tied with Cricks. That's incredible. Tied with Cricks. Yeah. Kricks. yeah. So I think it's because of the the CID change to Waltz, because if you look at uh, faction statistics, you can see that uh, Bones of Orboros is the most popular theme force. Uh, 13 yeah. people plays it, and I'm not surprised. And Call of the Wild is the second. So it looks like uh, recent changes, the theme drop and and CID put Circle back into 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 meta train and um, there's uh, one more thing that that's surprising and it's um, the popularity of uh, Bradigus like no one played Bradigus before and after CID uh, all of the sudden all white release yeah all, all of the sudden there are six Bradiguses there and and it's a bit surprising because people I'm sure they they didn't have time to put reps into into mastering him. Like Bradigus is really hard to to play. Like I've tried it. I, I played four games with him and I won all four games. So he's definitely strong. But every time I play play him, like the the placement uh, for a fit, the turn before you fit. It's so hard because of push rules and yeah. terrain on the table. Watch everything, angle and, uh, and etc. Yeah. yeah, because push says that uh, you always halve the distance in uh, rough terrain, and no matter if you have a pathfinder or not, every obstruction um, stops your feet. It's really hard to play and difficult mm -hmm. caster to. I would say he was more difficult to play for me than Kruger too, and. Many people That's, consider yeah. Kruger to like one of the most difficult yeah. casters to to play, yeah. right? All right. So uh, I also like the spread of the factions. Maybe 
too many minions, but uh, what can I do? All right. <laughs> Thomas, thanks for joining today. Uh, we'll have yeah, to thanks up. for having me. Uh, yeah, you are one of the hosts now, so let's end with that and uh, hear you next time. Yeah, see you. Thank you for listening to Boxcars. I hope you liked it. See you soon.